CWPA Remote. Hi, I'm Ed Hawes, and this is CWPA Remote. Joining us today is University of California Sound Barber alum Hunter Armour, who is currently working as a video producer at Fansided. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about playing experience at UC Santa Barbara and then how you got into the video business. Yeah, uh, at UC Santa Barbara, I had a, a great time playing for the club team there. Um, I actually transferred to UC Santa Barbara my junior year, so uh, joining the club water polo team was a great way for me to meet some people, um, make some friends, um, and also, you know, um, the Southern California region for club water polo is really competitive mm -hmm. um, and it's a really fun league. So um, I had a great time playing with them. We made it all the way to the regional championship, um, lost by one goal to UCLA. Um, but uh, yeah, I had an awesome time playing there. Um, and so that, you know, my time at Santa Barbara, um, I, uh, interned for the athletic department and started making videos for them. Um, and so that uh, was able to set me up to get a job with Stanford Athletics after time at UC Santa Barbara, uh, ran the video department at the athletic department there for a while. And now I'm based out of Chicago, Illinois, um, running video uh, operations for fansided.com and their 300 different sports and entertainment websites. Um, which has been awesome. I've been there for about three years and um, gotten to travel and tell a lot of stories in sports, um, do a lot of fun interviews, um, and work with a lot of interesting people. All right. You mentioned you transferred into UC Santa Barbara. Uh, if I remember correctly, you were at Cabrillo College for your first two years and then transferred into UC Santa Barbara. Uh, how was that experience going from one institution to another institution and transferring in and kind of picking up, you know, midway through the college experience and you're changing over. Yeah. So I actually did that twice. Um, my, my freshman year, I, uh, played for Mike Maroney at university of Pacific. Um, that was right when my first season, right after that, James Graham took over the program. Um, and being a goalie, uh, you know, it's hard to get a spot, a spot in line to play. So I ended up transferring to Cabrillo Junior College, played there for one year, and then made the transfer to UC Santa Barbara. And I think each step of the way, kind of like I mentioned before, it was a great um, way to leverage my water polo skills to create a social group and find a group of guys to hang out with, um, do stuff with. I mean, the people who I played with, um, practiced with, hung out with on the weekends. Um, so it all kind of, um, worked together. And I thought, you know, in college being involved in some sort of program, um, whether it's sports or a club or something else, I think is, is really important. And water polo was that for me. Hmm. Well, you ended up going back to Cabrillo once you got out and ended up being the coach there for, uh, a little over a year, I think. Two seasons, yeah. Two seasons. How was the transition going from player going back now as the coach and leading the team as a coach? It was really fun. Um, you know, I think as a player, there's – even if you're a really smart-minded player and, and know the game really well, there's a lot of things that you don't really get to learn until you're a coach. Uh, one benefit I had from working at, at Stanford Athletics was I became really close with the women's water polo coach there, John Tanner. So mm -hmm. um, going into my first season at Cabrillo, um, I'd be in touch with him a lot, uh, talking about different uh, elements of the team, different strategies I can work on, different things like that. Um, and that really helped me out a lot. Um, I think – you know, with, with junior college specifically, the range of talent is really broad. You've got guys coming in from overseas. You've got uh, different, you know, Division One water polo. There's only so many scholarships. So you still get really talented people at the, at the lower levels, mm -hmm. uh, below Division One. 
So it was just about finding uh, a way to take the group of guys I had and getting us, you know, competitive um, against some teams that were probably more talented. Um, but junior college, you know, it changes every year. Every year, different teams rise and fall uh, based off the talent. So um, I, I highly recommend trying coaching for a little bit for any former player, even if it's uh, coaching under 12s at a club program, um, you know, it's, it's a really enjoyable experience. And I think it's a lot more fun um, than it might seem when you're a player and the coach is yelling at you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was, uh, and it's something I'd like to get back into. Um, Career-wise, it's just been a little difficult yeah. um, at this point. You don't have that much spare time at the moment? I'm, I'm stunned. <laughs> <laughs> no, not like I used to. Um, you know, maybe if we could have practice at eight or nine at night, I could I could make it. <laughs> well, you mentioned you went to Stanford, did video there, and then you ended up leaving California and going to Chicago with Fan Sided. Uh, how was the transition from California to Chicago, and you know, kind of stepping out of college athletics necessarily and more into uh, you know, kind of a broad based video experience where you're dealing with a multitude of different you know, different areas you're dealing with, dealing with a different bunch of different, uh, not limited just to, you know, 12 or 14 or 15 sports necessarily, but you're kind of running the gambit of, of video content. Yeah, um, I've really enjoyed my time in Chicago and, and with Fansided so far. Um, Chicago is, I think, growing up on the West Coast, uh, we get pretty focused on the West Coast and kind of forget that there's a whole other country out there yeah. um so i think chicago really opened my eyes uh with how much it has going for it um and, and there is a water polo scene in chicago you know it's it's not as big as california but outside mm -hmm. of california it's probably one of the bigger water polo scenes um so you know i think the winter was a little bit of an adjustment um growing up in santa cruz california i wasn't used to negative degrees um but people there just take it in stride and you just kind of roll with them um with fan side it you know um i've been there about three years and it just continues to grow and i love working with so many different sports and entertainment and teams it just every day is new and different and um even right now with coronavirus and sports being put on hold it's a new challenge of creating content uh, for these different sports that people still want to digest, even with no live sports going on right now. Um, so, you know, it's, it's been a, a great company to work for, and I'm looking forward to continuing to work there for a while. All right. For someone who's looking to get into the field, getting into video production, and uh, what advice would you give them at this point? You know, kind of into the experience yeah. a couple of years now. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing for me was getting involved as much as possible in college, whether that's going to a junior college or a four year or online, um, you know, you can go to college and go to the classes and you need to do that to get your degree. But so many people are willing to offer opportunities to college students that you don't get once you're out in the real world. Um, so, you know, I, I interned at the athletic department. I worked on film sets every weekend. I played water polo during the week, went to tournaments on the weekend also. So I just had to balance that. And I think it's worth it to push yourself in those four or five years to take on as much as possible, um, to set yourself up down the line. Um, so I think that's the, the big thing is, is it's never too early to get involved, um, even on something that, you know, maybe you're just shooting practice film and that's might not be something that you want to do 20 years from now, but shooting that practice film will show that you've done some work and then you can build on that. So I, I think getting involved as early as possible with anything possible um, is a great first step. All right. That seems like a great place to end. Hunter, thanks for doing this for us and good luck with uh, fan sided and whatever the next step is. If you, you keep progressing and, you know, look forward to whatever you do next. Thank you, Ed. It was great to talk to you. It's like you.